Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Spencer, and I'm here to do uh, a sort of tutorial, not really, no uh, walkthrough. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying a thing. Let's put it that way. Um, I'm making this video because I couldn't find anything like it, and I kind of wanted there to be one before uh, when, when I was looking at it. Uh, what I'm going to be doing today is I have my mixer which you can sort of see the cables for behind the arm here. Um, and it's a, a digitally controlled mixer. It's a Behringer X18. And I want to create a better control surface for it using a Raspberry Pi because uh, they, they have the control soft software available for Raspberry. Um, and there is not a lot of videos on YouTube right now that de uh, in fact, there are no videos on YouTube right now that detail the setup process and how to get that going, probably because in most cases there doesn't need to be. Um, but I wanted one. I wanted to see one before I actually did it myself. There isn't one. So I'm going to create one in the off chance that there's someone else who also wants to see one before they do it themselves. So I have never used a Raspberry Pi before, so that's going to be interesting. That's the first proviso. The second is that I'm going to be reading instructions because if you aren't reading instructions, what are you doing? Uh, trying to make it up seems silly when there's people who have done that before you. So I have a Raspberry Pi 3, uh, Model B. Um, I'm going to start out actually by throwing it in its case. Uh, a cheap case I found on Amazon where I buy all my things. Uh, and I was considering getting a second shot of my workstation where or the, the work surface on my desk here. And then I realized I only have one camera and I don't want to give people motion sickness and I'm not going to edit this because I'm lazy. Um, so that's the second proviso. First proviso, I have no idea what I'm doing. Second proviso, I'm not going to edit because I'm lazy. So I'm filming this as live, uh, even though it isn't actually live. And the first thing I've done is I've gotten the, the pie itself stuck in the, in the packaging uh, because I took it out to look at it earlier and didn't keep it out. Tried to put it back and apparently put it back in wrong. So if you've never seen one before, this is the Raspberry Pi 3 specifically. They come in multiple, or, or obviously this is the third one, so they, there's lots of multiples. Um, the reason I went with the 3 is just because it's the newest. I could probably get along just fine with a 1 or a 2. But 3 is the one that they're currently touting, and so that's the one that I bought. Uh, important things that it has... Uh, it has HDMI, which is going to be important to connect to a monitor. Uh, it has Ethernet, which is going to be important to connect via the network protocol that is going to control the soundboard and then various other I.O. to make everything happen. So I'm just going to really quickly slot this into the case that I bought. And theoretically, this should be f pretty simple. The case itself didn't come with instructions, I assume, because I thought you wouldn't need them. Um, and so I'm going to hope that I don't. Because if a thing doesn't come with instructions and then I find out that I need instructions for it, that probably means there's something wrong with me, but it also could just mean that it's a very cheap product and they didn't QA it properly. So there, it's in the case. The case has room for expansion in it, which I will not be using. Because again, I just wanted a cheap computer to plug in to run uh, the software for me. Uh, so Raspberry Pis, they have some internal memory, but no internal storage. All that happens through this tiny slot that my camera terribly uh, overexposed there, where you put an, uh, a micro SD card. Micro? Mini? Whatever the smallest type is, the kind that you put in phones. I don't remember names and such. Um, so I'm going to come over here and pull in here's the instructions for getting raspberry in on your raspberry pi buy the pre-installed card i didn't do that install with noobs that's what we're gonna do uh so get the sd card and format it i have done that already download noobs i have also done that because it took like 20 minutes for some reason I'm not actually sure why it's kind of annoyed that it took so long but my I don't know if my internet's acting up or it's most likely my network to my computer is being silly. Anyway, visit the downloads page, download the thing. I have done this. Hit the zip button, save it, extract the files from the zip. This is where we are. Boom. So here's the files. You see I have a new here. I also have, um, this is XR Edit. That's the, key, the control app for Raspberry. So I have that as well. Uh, so extract these, extract all. 
Uh, questions. I don't actually want you to see this because I have silly naming structure, but sure. Do that. It's taking this long to extract. Again, I probably should have done this beforehand so that we weren't waiting for it to extract, but at least we didn't have to wait for it to download. I'm glad I at least had the foresight to do that correctly. Okay, there we are. We are extracted. Now we're actually extracted. Okay, so it's this file here. Um, once your SD card has been formatted, drag all the files in the extracted news folder and drop them into the SD card drive. So do I drag the whole file or do I drag all the stuff individually? Um, that's a good question. I'm going to, I'm just going to drag this folder in. Let me read that again. Drag all the files in the extracted folder and drop them into the SD card drive. So no, maybe I shouldn't have them in the folder. Maybe I should. Um, let's. Okay, so there, have they all transferred yet? No, because I have a very slow connection to the SD card itself. So transferring giant files is going to take a bit. It's okay. We'll wait. Oh, you know what else I should do while I'm thinking about this? Should copy this thing over too so that I don't have to do it separately later. It's much smaller. It copies much faster. Still only 99% complete. There we are. All right. I'm going to try it once. No, I'm not. Um, yeah, it seems like I need to take everything out of here. I'm just going to cut it real quick and paste it in the directory itself. I'll delete this file so I'm not confused by it later. Um, and then I have the, the program, the Xair program for later. So we'll go ahead and um, transition back here. Go ahead and pop that out. Uh, safely eject hardware. There it is. Oh, noise. Safely remove hardware. So there's the everything. Goes in the bottom of the box. And then we power it. Power it and hope that it works. Well, I'm getting signal over there. Let's see if I'm getting signal over here. Transition over. Yes, we are. All right. Here we go. Um, wow. I'm not certain that you'll be able to read that. Um, eh, it's all right. So there is an option here to install many different possible OSs including Windows 10 Core. Um, none of these are one on Windows 10 Core, especially not. Windows 10 might be... Um, uh, if it was Windows 10, I might be... I might do that instead just because I'm more familiar with Windows than I am with any form of Linux, i.e. I have never used any form of Linux before. But uh, this is Windows 10 Core, which means you can only use it with Windows... Um, Windows Store apps, which considering that I'm specifically getting this to run one application that isn't in the Windows Store, guess what? I'm not doing that. So, uh, full desktop version. Yeah, I want the full desktop version, I think. Long All that on the drive will be overwritten. And that means I might have to pop it back out and get that program on it again or just go and download it from uh, Behringer's website or music group website. In the meantime, this is going to take some time installing. And I think I've decided at this point that as I wait for this to install, rather than sitting here in silence, because again, I don't have an under track going right now, unless I've added one in post, which I might do since I am apparently going to be editing this. Uh, I'm just going to cut the video here. And after this jump cut, the OSs have installed successfully. Uh, there's just one OS, but they put the S's there, I'm sure to uh, to cover their 
cover any possible things so they only have to make one dialogue box. So let's see what happens next. Um, I actually have no idea. Command line. Oh, goody. Checking for progress on one disk. Wow, this is tiny. This is very difficult to read. Um, powered right by Raspberrian. Good for it. I have the instructions here because instructions are fantastic. Because uh, I'm going to have to log in in a second. With the default, I'm not going to have to log in. Okay, great. Well, that's that out of the way, at least. Good, I don't have to get into a freaking command prompt. I really didn't want to have to do that. Um, so let's open the file manager first. See if... Uh, oh, it's Chromium. Of course it is. See real quick if it had kept... I didn't expect it to. It doesn't appear to have kept any of the... Any of the information for the, or the, the the download that I had made earlier onto it, that's fine. So we're going to come into Chromium. Go ahead and have to learn how to navigate this completely new OS and see how it works. And good, my keyboard is working. I wasn't certain. Um, we are going to look for, uh, not Z, X Air Edits. You can tell this isn't the keyboard I usually use. What is Duck Duck Go? Let's never use that again. I'm just gonna, just, just, I just have to fix this right now. Uh, person, I'm not gonna sign in. Um, themes is whatever. Show home button, show bookmarks, uh, do to do, font size, custom fonts, page themes. That's one thing I might actually look at real quick is the desktop preferences. Just see if it can be. No, okay. There we are, default search engine should always be Google. Just always Google. Great. That's just a little annoying thing that I got out of the way now. Um, X Air Edit. And we come into the XR18 because it has all the same information that you need for the X18. Um, come into apps, see all applications. I want for Raspberry Pi. I agree to the above terms and I download. And it is downloaded. I open it. Let's see. This thing. It's executable. Let's execute it. Great. So that's running. Um, I'm going to really quickly. Yep, it's there. Let's connect to my thing. Mixer to PC. And you can see that it's all connected there. One thing and just. Uh, which one is it? Is it monitor? GUI preferences. Um, it just it doesn't actual it doesn't actually need to be here. Uh, I can't see it. Okay, never mind. Um, okay, so it's on. You can see it, my microphone is here. That's where the audio is coming through right now. Uh, PC. So currently, um, I'm obviously running this with a mouse. My hope uh, for the final uh, for the final iteration of this thing is that ooh, this is actually noise. This doesn't appear to be noising right now. I'll look at that later. Uh, my hope for the final iteration of this thing is to have a touch screen. But let's talk right now um, price because price is important. So the the Raspberry Pi itself is thirty five dollars. That's why Raspberry Pis are so attractive because they're freaking cheap. It's a $35 fully functional computer as long as you know what to do, how to do what you want to with it. And right now I've got it doing what I want to or what I want it to. Um, add on to that uh, the the SanDisk, the, the micro uh, USB stick, and uh, not USB, the SD stick, the, the storage. Wow, brain. Um, I got a 16 gig version that was a little less than $10. Uh, and uh, the case that I have is a little less than six dollars, five seventy eight. Um, so in total, right now I'm just fifty dollars into this, and I have a fully functional work uh, uh, control surface that is separate from my main PC, which is the other thing I've used. Uh, keep in mind that um, that doesn't include the cost of any of the monitors that I own because I already have those. So this is just fifty dollars for this box to run this program. What I'm hoping in the future. Uh, and 
well, I don't know how far into the future, is to get a touchscreen monitor that I can plug in to this. And uh, that's gonna be a bit trickier. The ones that I've been looking at are anywhere from 250 to $300 uh, to get the nice, I want, um, let's let's flip back to here, is to, I, I want a nice large size. I don't want a small touchscreen. The Raspberry Pis themselves come, or there is the same people that put out the Raspberry Pi, who are they? Element 14. Is that the right name? Sure. We'll say Element 14 because that's the branding on the front of the box. Uh, they create, uh, they, they make a 7-inch touchscreen. That's not big enough for me. I have, I have a tablet already that is, um, I think, 10 inches. I'm not sure. Um, I want bigger. That's, that's why I've, uh, that's why I started this project. Um, I want something preferably kind of in the, 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 the 22 or more uh, size range for a touchscreen monitor to run this on. And those are expensive. Uh, but th that's going to be the next step. And there will probably be an update video at that point. But this video is showing off what I wanted to see before I made this purchase. But I didn't see. So I made the purchase anyway so that I could make the video for other people. And that's just simply getting the stuff out of the box, getting the OS running, getting the program installed and and running. And you, you can see if we switch back here, beep, 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 there it is. The the program's there, it's running. You can see the, the meters bouncing when I talk. If I were to play some music off of my, uh, off of my main PC, which is going in somewhere else, this will take me a second because I need to actually find music that is okay for me to use. And by okay for me to use, I mean I have some um, uh, YouTube music that I've downloaded somewhere. Here we are. Um, let's, let's just listen to this. You can see the meters are bouncing right now. And if I uh, turn them on, fade them in. Uh, this is Invisible, which I downloaded from the YouTube audio library, and I don't have any more information on that currently on the screen. But that's the name of the track, because accreditation is important. Um, uh, yeah, somewhere I have the uh, Vibe Tracks. There it is. Vibe Tracks is the artist, from the, and I got that from the YouTube audio library. Anyway, um, so yeah, the music's there. Uh, or you, you, the 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 sur control surface is there. You can see that the control surface is working, and that's what I wanted to show getting up and running. And in the future, I will hopefully get a nice big touchscreen monitor and pay way too much money for it, and be able to show off that as well. But in the meantime, I want to thank anybody who is watching this. I hope that it's been helpful to someone out there. And uh, and and until next time, you have a good one, right? Right. I still don't have a good sign off for these.